Corrosion is a lot like gravity. It's ceaseless, patient, and relentlessly waiting for any chance it can get to screw up your whole day. In our small project here, the entire hull of our boat is made from mild steel, which is iron melted down with a small amount of carbon added to it. It's not much. Mild steel, also called low carbon steel, is only about 0.05 to about 0.3% carbon. But that's all it takes to turn it from being just iron into being basic steel. This is the most common form of steel by far. It's cheap, malleable, ductile, and used for more applications than you can imagine. But steel, even our simple mild steel, is a refined metal. We've lifted it up a notch from its original base elements of carbon and iron and given it some muscle. The problem here is that simple mild steel in the presence of air and water will change into iron oxide, the main part of what most people call rust, and a few other things. The process is called electrochemical oxidation, but in the case of iron, most people call it rusting. This is the lowest stable chemical state of our refined steel, because entropy wins in the end, every time. So we have to do our part to hold back entropy. Now the process of corrosion is all centered around oxidation, much the same as fire. Just like in firefighting, we can stop rust in the same ways. Fire needs heat, fuel, and air in order to exist. If we remove any one of those ingredients, the fire goes out. We can do the same with corrosion. For the electrochemical corrosion process of rusting to take place, it needs a piece of steel, that's our fuel. It needs air, and it needs a bit of moisture. There's a lot of different processes that we could use to stop this, and they all have various pros and cons. We could carburize the surface. We could go down the paths of passivation or chromate conversion. People have been fighting oxidation for as long as we've been working with metal. For our particular application, we're going to have to give our boat a hard shell, tightly bonded to the surface, that'll shield our bright and clean steel from both air and moisture. This is a tall order, given that we're working with a boat. At every moment of its existence, it'll be completely surrounded by either air or water. Such is the life of a boat. The first step in this process is to get everything clean. For any anti-corrosion coatings to actually work, the entire surface has to be completely free of any grease, rust, oil, water, dust, or any other contaminants. So we begin our process here with a heavy-duty pressure washer. This is a 4,500 PSI rig with a zero-degree tip turbo nozzle. Zero degrees means that the spray pattern doesn't spread out at all. It's just a straight jet of water. The turbo nozzle spins that tip in a small circle, giving us a highly aggressive pattern. I've used this same tip to strip paint right off a concrete wall. In this application, the tip won't damage the steel at all, but it's hell on anything covering the surface. The process took a whole afternoon to accomplish, but it's removed huge amounts of gunge, decades of old paint layers, any loose rust, and a heavy coating of coal tar that was the original anti-corrosion layer in the interior of this boat, built in 1984. The end result of pressure washing was that any degraded or loose paint was completely removed and the interior of the boat is now clean and ready for the next step, sandblasting.